Driving at Home with Avor's Housing Economist, Claire Losey. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Driving at Home podcast here at the Austin Board of Realtors and Unlock MLS. I'm Kalea Youngblood, your Chief Marketing Officer, joined by Dr. Claire Losey. Hey, Claire. Hey, guys. We are back this week, and we're going to jump right into new home construction and higher mortgage interest rates and how that's intertwined and uh, new home construction is being affected. So, Claire, why don't you go ahead and let's jump right in and talk about the higher mortgage rate and how they may or may not affect the demand for homes, but also new home supply. Right. So generally speaking, we focus on the intersection of mortgage rates and their effect on sales. However, we also have to recognize that mortgage rates very much affect residential construction as well and builders' willingness to put new supply on the ground. So generally speaking, of course, when we see higher mortgage rates, there's more of a reluctance among builders to put new supply on the ground for a couple of reasons. First of all, we have to think about the fact that builders are also incurring increased costs from higher mortgage rates, i.e. they have to also obtain financing in the form of acquisition, development, and construction loans, et cetera. So they're incurring those higher borrowing costs as well. And then two, there's just also the effect of they could see a decline in demand among buyers for new homes if those buyers are constrained by affordability with higher rates. In other words, builders may have to offer concessions to get that supply off their balance sheets. So generally speaking, what we've seen over the past really year and a half plus now within the higher rate environment is that single family residential construction has declined on average. However, over the past couple of months in the Austin MSA, what we've seen is a little bit of a rebound on a year over year basis. So for example, year over year in August, Permits for new single-family homes increased about 6%, in September increased 1%, and then in October increased 8%. Of course, we're comparing those to significant declines in new permits last year. However, there has been a little bit of an uptick, so indicative of some builder stickiness right to those higher rates and some optimism that we've achieved peak rates, if you will, and we're now entering into a territory in which we're going to continue to see mortgage rates gradually decline as they probably normalize temporarily around somewhere in the six range. So that's interesting because a few weeks ago, we talked about this notion that we are now truly in a year-to-year comparison, apples to apples, similar to that of residential resale. So it is a good time to compare what's going on in the new construction sector as well. And then how does new single-family construction in Austin compare to that across the U.S.? You had talked about it sort of leveling out and declining and then the uptick. How are we comparing to the rest of the U.S.? Overall, on a year-over-year basis, we're faring a little bit better than that of the broader nation. And two, this is an opportune moment to bring in home builder confidence. And some of our listeners may be familiar with this. The National Association of Home Builders every month releases their home builder confidence measure. And essentially, it reflects either optimism or pessimism among home builders across the U.S., And that number has declined over the past four months, of course, as mortgage rates rose and it reached 34 in November. Any number below 50 indicates that builders on average are more pessimistic about the state of the new home market. So we've seen that there have been some declines, right, in home builder confidence over the past couple of months after there was an uptick and build our confidence following a significant decline in the midst of the initial mortgage rate surge in 2022. So just to put that into context for the Austin market to see those year-over-year increases in new single-family permits indicates that we're, again, faring a little bit better than the U.S. overall. Awesome. 
And that's true to Austin just in general. We've fared better throughout the years with the ups and downs of real estate and the highs and lows of the market. I would just also add that when we're thinking about new residential construction, it's important not only to consider the effect of higher mortgage rates, but also just the costs of construction goods and services themselves. So overall, we've seen a pretty significant hike in the cost of construction goods and services over the past several years. For example, the cost of construction goods rose 37% from October of 2019 to October of 2023, and construction goods broadly represent materials, while the cost of construction services, i.e. labor, rose 29% over the same time frame, i.e. October of 2019 to October of 2023. However, on a year-over-year basis, the cost of construction goods and services measured essentially flat. So on a year-over-year basis in October of this year, the cost of construction goods measured negative 0.9%, while the cost of construction services increased a very slight 1.2%. So when we couple the effect of elevated construction costs and higher mortgage rates, of course, those two factors are going to raise the prices of new homes and constrain affordability. So with that being said, we know that affordability in the Austin MSA is very much already an acute need, the need for affordable housing. And that's something that we highlight and really expound upon in our most recent research report, which is the truth about Austin's missing housing. And essentially what we're documenting in that report is just the sheer need for affordable homes among the lowest income cohorts, especially households earning less than 80% of area median income. And we also highlight disparities in affordability across racial and ethnic groups, and across council districts. So we know that new supply, new housing supply is very much needed, especially in the Austin market. So just the fact that we have seen some flatlining in construction costs is good news. But again, it's important to remember that those costs do remain elevated, and that makes it more difficult for builders to put supply on the ground that's going to be affordable to lower and middle income households. Yeah, thanks for plugging that segments report. There's one thing that came to mind to me just in this conversation also, which was another report that we actually released last summer. And that was the Central Texas Housing Development Fees Analysis that we did alongside the Home Builders Association. And basically, it was just a call to action to right size the fee structures and transparency in the city of Austin development fees. Um, It was a really, really interesting report. We'll definitely link to that as well. But that coupled with the housing expenses and housing costs to build really makes it not affordable and harder in Austin. And so that is some of the work on behalf of the advocacy efforts here at ABOR that we do provide to our membership and also just really try to keep the city of Austin at the forefront of ensuring that we are top of mind and working alongside the city elected officials to make sure that we can have a house for everybody here in Austin, right? So let's flip the script a little bit here, Dr. Lucy, and let's talk about what's going on for our weekly stats here in Central Texas. Can you give us an update? Absolutely. So overall, unsurprisingly, we saw a pretty significant decline in closed sales just due to the Thanksgiving holiday. Folks were out of the office, potentially even all of last week, but at least if not for several days, Thursday, Friday too, maybe. So overall, closed sales declined about 42% on a week-over-week basis, and closed leases were also down significantly, down about 52%. Again, very much to be expected. Active listings remained flat on both the residential sales side and leasing side at about 0.6% for the residential sales side, about 3% for residential leases. And then meanwhile, new listings were also down significantly. Again, just a sheer offset of the Thanksgiving holiday, right? So this past week is was very much an anomaly 
And so week over week comparison is not particularly helpful this particular week, but definitely stay tuned within the next couple of weeks as we release our November housing stats and continue to track the market on a weekly basis. And don't forget, everybody, if you are looking to sell that one last house this year and get your clients under contract, we do have a free Austin Business Journal subscription. You can see what's going on here in Austin. Use that for lead generation and understanding what companies are bringing employees here to Austin. Be a smart reader, you know, and go take advantage of your AWAR resources to help you help support your business and help you have that one last sale this year. Thanks so much, Dr. Losey, for joining us with your helpful insights. It's now is still time to buy and sell folks. So get out there and we hope you have a great end of the month and we'll see you again or you'll hear from us again next week. Thanks so much. Thanks guys. Take care.